Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I'll just uh, move that out of the way, close down the chat box, slide that down there. Yep, fine. Um, back on cable. Um, and what I wanted to show you a couple of things uh, which really highlight the. Uh, let's start with. Um, let me start with this. This is the 15 second. And don't uh, don't get concerned that that uh, you know I'm constantly on a faster time frame. This is very quick. I have this running a lot. It's one I use for pretty much everything, uh, whatever it is. Certainly from a scalping perspective. At any anyway, rate, what I wanted to highlight really was this from the London Open. And if you have Ninja Trader and uh, or at least a fast chart, if you have a minute chart, something like this, and you're learning VPA, then I would urge you to go to a fast chart because you'll get all the same lessons in a very quick time. Uh, it's it's uh, you know everything will come through uh, rapidly in terms of the learning process. But if you look at this, uh, let's just pull this over a little bit. This is eight o'clock, so you know, oh, white right back over here. There we go. That's the London Open over here. That's just fine. So you know, at this point, we're 15 minutes in. We've got news coming up and all the rest of it. What happens? We had a surge in volume. Then you start to look at uh, candles in relation to their volume and in the context of anomalies. Is price action in agreement with volume? Is it in disagreement? Is it buying? Is it selling? You know, what is going on here? And the sort of candles that, that you know, immediately catch your eye are either very low volume ones like here or very high volume ones like here. And if you just take this high volume example, the we're in the same uh, session period. So we, we're comparing like with like. In other words, apples with apples. We're not jumping a session and, and looking at something that went on some time ago and, and trying to you know get some analysis from that. We've got rising volume here, which is fine. But when you start to look at the uh, the volume underneath it, look at the volume here and the price action. It's pretty narrow, huge amount of volume, biggest volume on the chart. You can only conclude one thing, that there is a massive amount of selling going on in this candle. There has to be, because if there weren't, this candle will be off, off the top of the chart here. It'd, be, it'd certainly be wider than this one, because if you look at this in terms of volatility, in terms of volume associated, you know, in terms of the volume going into this candle, should be two or three times the height. It isn't. So what does that tell you? It tells you that that is a massive amount of selling by the market makers. There has to be selling in there because the price and volume are in disagreement. It's anomalous, in other words. So don't expect the market to you know, roar up higher from there. It's going to, at the very least, congest into further congestion, which you do indeed see. We've got similar sort of repeat patterns here. Market's trying to go up. You've got selling into there. You've got narrow spread candle, wick to the upper body and higher volume than the previous one. So it's just mirroring the fact that uh, there is selling going on in here. Market rolls. Bear in mind this is fast time frame. Then we see a volatility trigger come in. Again, we've got high volume under here. Now we're into congestion phase. But in addition to that, just pulling in other elements of VPA, we've also got the volume point of control up here, but we've also got support and resistance building here. This, this uh, ceiling here, which is building, we broke through it here. It's now developing more strongly. It's been tested, retested. So it's developing into a strong area. Now, if the market breaks through that uh, at some point in the future, on a 15 second chart, that could be in the next few minutes. But if it breaks through that level, then you've got a nice platform support in below and you've got volume falling away up here. So the market's going to move through there pretty swiftly. What you also saw there is another facet of the volume point of control. It moves. It doesn't sit anchored in one place forever. It is constantly moving around depending on how this volume profile is building and rebuilding the whole time. So it's something that will relocate to the next area. Once price reaches that level, congests and then as Anderson starts to move away into developing a trend then the volume point of control ultimately will move according to uh, where the next volume profile starts to build at the moment on the one minute chart we're up here still we're now starting to break away into this into this bearish phase of price action which looks as though it's developing we've got a low volume node coming up here but the other point I wanted to make about uh, traps is not only do we see trap moves at the open we also see trap moves associated with news. It's classic. And, you know, let's be honest about it. If you were a um, if you were a market maker, then you would be doing exactly the same thing. You would be taking advantage of every single opportunity that comes along through the day. Session crossovers are fixed in time, so they're always the same. Uh, news is fixed. You know when it's coming up. There's all sorts of other opportunities as well, but this is another classic. We had the volatility trigger, 
market congests, reverses, you know, we're still in this congestion phase within the, the band of the price action, if you will, of this initial trigger on news. So you will see this all the time in all time frames. And if you drop back down onto our 10 minute chart where we were earlier on, what have we got there? Volatility trigger, trap move. Traders will have jumped on that, on the news, thinking, yep, the market's going to uh, rocket high, you know, it's going to take off. Now, what are they sitting in? They're regretting that decision. We're into volatility and we're into congestion and a possible reversal back down to where? Probably down to the volume point of control again. So when you're trading, when you're, I know it, it's, when you look at these things, you think, well, you know, where am I going to trade? Well, it's just a fact of life. You have to accept the fact you've got fundamental news. You have to accept the fact you've got session crossovers. These things are coming along all day, every day, and you have to pick your moment as to when you're going to get into a trade, how long you're going to be in a trade. If you've got news coming up, and you've maybe got a position in the market, what are you going to do? Are you going to close that position in total? Are you going to partially close it if, you're, if you've got multiple contracts running? What are you going to do? If you're not in the market, do you wait? How long do you wait for? And how far, how far before the news comes along do you decide, I'm not going to trade, I'm just going to wait and be patient? Those are all the things you have to ask yourself constantly all day long. It is an ongoing process. Now, if you're a longer term, that's really from a, an intraday perspective. If you're a longer term trader, if you're looking at the dailies, then these things become far less important to you. They're of, of, I wouldn't say they're of no significance, but in terms of your position, you're not going to be worried about what the, the fundamental data is in the next five minutes or what the US markets are doing in the next five minutes. It's just not on your radar because you're trading such a slow time frame that all that news will be automatically buffered into your position. You will have a much, much wider stop loss. And therefore, uh, the reason you have that is to allow for all this buffering that goes on intraday, this constant flip-flop in sentiment, constant reversals, constant back and forth. You are holding a completely different position in the market. It's as simple as that. So from a, an intraday perspective, you have to make all these decisions which is why a lot of traders migrate to slower timeframes because they might find it stressful. Uh, you might not have the opportunity to sit in front of a screen all day long. You might you know, have a, have a, a full-time job, which we always advocate when you're learning this stuff. Um, it, and, and the key point is this, you have to find out what works for you. And within the Forex trading program, the, the module that we always, always urge all our students to start with is the psychology of module. And we get occasionally grumbles and moans, and oh, you know, I want to get to the indicators and charts and blah, blah, blah. Um, but that is the place to start. And the reason it's so important is very simple, because if you understand your strengths and weaknesses, if you understand what is likely to suit you from a temperament perspective, you will give yourself a far greater chance of success. Find out what works for you, because if you're not comfortable if you're not comfortable trading fast time frames, scalping, whatever, then you know you're just not going to make it because you'll feel you'll be uncomfortable. And if you're doing something you're uncomfortable doing, then you're not going to enjoy it and you're not going to make money. You have to settle on what suits you. And within that module, uh, there's a there's a complete analysis profile that you do yourself. You find out all about yourself. Uh, you understand about psychology, you understand about all the fears and emotions we all go through, how to manage them better, and really to, to, to manage, to play to your strengths and manage your weaknesses, which is really what it's all about. I'm going to stop there because we've been going uh, a little bit, little while now. Let's, um, let's just pop that up again. That's the five minute. That's where we are. We're in congestion. We've got the volume point of control here. And I suppose to answer the question that I'm asking is, well, where, what do you do now? If you're not in the market and you want to, uh, you, you're thinking of getting into this, you, you believe this is going to go higher, you know, dollars selling, I'm just looking over in terms of the VIX, just pull that over before we wrap up. This is the one that I have, you should have this everywhere, every, whether you're a, a longer term trader, whether you're an intraday trader, whether you're scalping on the fa very fast timeframes, you've got to have this chart up somewhere. If you don't have it, like I have it here on TradingView, but if you haven't got it, go to investing.com. They've got all the markets there. You can have it there. You can see what's going on. What is going on at the moment? The VIX is falling. What does that tell you? 
It tells you its risk on sentiment at the moment. That may change in the next you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes. That's the way the markets are right now. And if you flip over onto the indices, let's have a quick look at uh, call in on the indices. There we go. What have we got? That's what we're seeing right now. It's the YM, the NQ and the ES. This is the, uh, the, the rampaging NQ at the moment. Let's pop that up full size for you. There we go. It's uh, rampaging out into new high ground. Very different from these guys. This is the Dow 30 YM. We are still trading inside the volatility indicator here. So, you know, in terms of context, that is unusual. As Anna said, you know, right at the start of the show, the NQ is really the one that is leading. But I have to say the S&P 500, this is the ES, this S&P 500, this is on the volatility. So we're still trading inside that range of that candle. You know, that doesn't look strong. If this is going to pull everything higher, so be it. But at the moment, you know, we've got congestion building pretty strongly on the other two indices. So it's going to have to have some serious, serious volume driven into that market to drag the other two higher. Not so much the YM, which tends to be a, very, a fairly restricted market, albeit obviously these are global companies, but there's only 30 of them. But if you go down to the S&P 500, you've got 500 of them. Um, so, you know, which is the more representative index, if you will? So that's what's going on there. Just call in onto the indices. Currency indices, where are we? If we can find them quickly, there we go. That's what we're seeing right now. Uh, this is on, just to remind you, five minutes, this is the yen. So we're seeing some, some reasonable selling in the yen now. That's reflected, obviously, in terms of risk. We've got selling of the dollar. We've got the pound in congestion now. We've got the euro had that uh, move higher, and that's, uh, that's gone back into its shell now, flip-flopping around in terms of congestion phase. And finally, just back to where we were. And the, there we go. And all of that is reflected, obviously, on the multiple strength currency CSIs. There we are. That's what we're seeing right now. Dollar still selling off, still selling off over on the 15 minute. Euro still climbing here, but it started to roll over on the faster time frames, three and five. Yen selling, yen selling, little bit of congestion here. So that's what we're seeing in terms of the currency strength indicator right now. And we've got congestion building. As you can see, we've got the, the pound falling with the dollar here, pound falling with the dollar. Pound falling with the dollar pound, and this is starting to roll over a little bit, possibly to reverse lower. So, you know, that's the reason that we are seeing congestion right now in cable. No great direction. The direction was that that was there has now dwindled away, and uh, you know we're back into the congestion phase, and we have to wait and be patient. So there we are. That's it. Uh, we are going to have to run. Uh, we're going to grab some coffee and take. Um, um, little Bertie here who's curled up beneath me in the bed uh, ready for his morning walk. We will be back. Just make sure we haven't got any more questions. Uh, thanks, guys. Thank you for your kind, kind comments. Much appreciated. Um, we will be back on Thursday at 5.15 UK time for the US Futures session. Hope you've enjoyed today. We do enjoy these and hope you do too. And uh, thank you so much for giving up your time coming along and, and listening to us. And we will be back. If you're not joining us on Thursday, we will be back same time next week at 7.45 London time. So enjoy the rest of the trading day. Watch out for the volatility traps. Watch out for the uh, traps on fundamental news. Finally, just to wrap up with uh, all the various sites, this is the Forex Education Program, which you can find at quantumtradingeducation.com. We call it the Complete Forex Trading Program because that is precisely what it is. It's everything you need to know. This is the psychology module I was mentioning. That's the one we always urge you to start with. There are 13 PDFs. Eight of them apply to the uh, psychology program. 13 PDFs in total. We cover the fundamentals, the relational, the technical analysis module is a deep dive into volume price analysis. It also covers that key area I mentioned about uh, primary and secondary trends and how you use VPA to help you identify those and stay in a trend. The mechanics of trading, we cover everything to do with currency flows, risk and money management, tactics, trading plan, all of that good stuff. There's 200 hours of video, over 200 hours of video in here. VP chart examples, how to use the indicators to get you up and running quickly, how to pull it all together, topic webinars, there's loads of topic webinars, trend trading, breakout trading. Do you want to trade reversals? You know, what is your tactical approach to the market? A vast array of webinar libraries, Q and A's. Uh, with Anna and myself that we recorded. And then we've got a resource, resources section as well. And finally, down at the bottom, uh, you can join, as Anna mentioned, the VPA trading room uh, hosted by um, us. We're there pretty much all day, every day. 
and uh, we also have a great bunch of students in there who give freely of their time we have experienced traders less experienced it's a very friendly group uh, we are all there to make money to support one another it's as simple as that so it's just part and parcel of what we do in the program in terms of the indicators sorry in terms of the indicators you can find them all here at quantumtrading.com mt45 ninja trader 7 and 8 and trading view we are getting pretty close to, we're just recording videos, we're building support pages for TradeStation, that's 9.5 and version 10. 9.5 is the relationship between interactive brokers and TradeStation. So if you have an IB account, it's a fantastic way to drive, uh, to actually trade through the TradeStation uh, platform. You just link the two together. It's very simple to do and it's just so powerful. It gives you the advantages of TradeStation, which is a fantastic trading platform with the, the benefits of trading a deep discount broker like Interactive. So that's coming shortly. And then we've got TradeStation Securities version 10, which is the other version, which gives you all the bells and whistles as well. Um, so the two of them will be coming out together. And of course, if you have any indicators and you want to transfer over to TradeStation, it's free of charge. We do that for all our customers. There's no charge. We just simply arrange it all for you because we believe what we believe in is that once you've invested in something with us, then you should have the opportunity to use that on whatever platform you choose that we have available and at no cost because you've invested and we just want to manage just to 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 help your investment we don't want to we're not going to charge you any more for that we just want to make it all manageable for you as your trading experience grows and develops on trading view we're going to drop back on there it looks as though we can pull all the other indicators across to that as well because they've updated the pine script which is fantastic news once we've done that We'll then be probably going on to multi charts as the next one, a next logical one for us. And then we've got others in the pipeline as well, which we're looking at. That's Anna's site, anacooling.com. You'll find all the books there uh, in Kindle and paperback, uh, all on Amazon. So you can uh, hop over there. And there's thousands of reviews now and across the lot. So um, we are very grateful for that and very humbled by it as well, because a lot of traders have discovered this methodology and are now making consistent profits, whereas before they were struggling. And it's just down to one thing, volume. Thanks very much. I'm gonna wrap up and run and uh, Anna's waving goodbye. So uh, have a good day. Enjoy the rest of the trading day and the rest of the trading week. And we will see you either on Thursday or back here next week. So thank you again and bye for now.